Hi, I'm Pastor Baron Savori, and if you are a pastor or a lay leader during this time of the pandemic, I have a special offer for you from PELC 2020. This year, we are presenting to all of those that register for PELC 2020 an opportunity to be a part of a brand new offering called Selah Sabbath. What is Selah Sabbath? Selah Sabbath is an opportunity for you to take a rest. As pastors, you've been learning how to go on StreamYard and Ecamm and vMix and going live on YouTube and so many other platforms each and every week. And it's far more exhausting than probably any of us really realized. And so we wanna give you a break. In fact, Selah this year is all about you taking care of yourself so that you can not only survive this pandemic, but thrive through it. So how do you access Selah Sabbath? Just register at PELC 2020. When you register, you'll get access to an entire church service that has been prepared just for you. We have three dynamic preachers for you to choose from. Alexander Bryant, the president of NAD, Dr. Andrea Trusty King, and Nathaniel Lyles. They've already preached their sermons and they're ready to give it to your church for free and give you as a pastor a break. We've also included prayer and music as well, so you don't have to worry about any of those things. I don't know about you, but I could use a break. And that's why I'm excited to be a part of Selah Sabbath, and I hope that you will be a part as well. Once again, you can access it by registering for PELC 2020 on the website PELC2020.com. When you register, you'll get access to Selah Sabbath so that you can have a rest. God bless you, and I look forward to joining you and the countless others as we enjoy a bit of Selah. Hello and welcome back to Selah at 5. I am Pastor Darnisha Thomas and I am looking forward to tonight's message by our fellow servant in ministry, Pastor Abdel George. 
So at this moment, I invite you, if you haven't already, just turn off your phone, get off your emails, and let us take some time and say love and savor the message that we'll be listening to tonight. God bless. continue to go further uh, in Jesus Christ. People are saying uh, that they can't hear me, so let me get a little louder. I hope you guys can hear me now. Uh, but we've been having a good time, and I'm excited about um, what we're going to experience tonight. And so uh, my co-host, Pastor Darnisha Thomas, is with me, and um, we're going to have a good time together as we uh, do this thing. What's going on, Darnisha? Hey! How's it going, Pastor Van? How's it going, Pope Nation? If you are happy and you know it, say amen. Say amen. Pope 2020 is all the way down the road. And uh, I am just excited about what we get a chance to do together every single day. It's been epic every day. What do you say? Listen, like, I I'm trying to process, like, I'm still trying to process that one drop from Dr. Morgan Medlock. All of us got that epic Medlock effect yeah. yesterday morning. And then today with Dr. Pastor Gina, Gina Stewart. Oh man, she preached. Yeah, listen, she preached. listen, that's a whole mood. Yeah, like, right. like when I saw her glasses, I knew it was about to go down. <laughs> the glasses did it, huh? It's the glasses for me, the glasses, the robe, the anointing, the whole nine yards, the Jesus, the intercessor for me. Wow. Well, we praise God for this uh, opportunity. People are telling me, man, that my mic needs to be tossed or maybe thrown away altogether. I don't know. Uh, but, hey, I'll do the best I can, and uh, hopefully we'll get it straightened out as we, go, uh, as we go further along. Hey, how about you do this? How about you pray for us right now? Will you do that? Sure, let us pray. Father in heaven, we just want to thank you so much for your wondrous blessings towards us, God. We thank you for the gift of Selah. We thank you, Lord, for our anointed preachers. And right now, God, we've seen you move mountains these past few days, these past few hours, and I believe we will see you do it again tonight. So, Father, we just invite your Holy Spirit to be with us right now under the sound of my voice. We thank you, God, in advance for continuing this momentum of your move. In your son's name, amen. Amen. We're going to be favored with a special selection by Sharice Tomlin and get your house in order. Y'all receive this song tonight. Work to do. This is God's work. Come on, y'all. My Lord. Come on, put your hands together. We've come to worship. We've come to have fun in Jesus' name. Come on, y'all. This is practice for glory.
You better get it, you better get it, you better get it. Yeah, this time is of the essence. You better get it all together. It's getting harder as the days pass by. Oh, God waits for no the one. There's only 24 hours in a seven day week, so please don't you let it pass you. Get your, get your what? My goodness, I hope you're getting it together. You better find it right. Jesus is trying to get your attention. Hey, get your house. Get your house. Get it all together. Get your house in order. Get your house. Get your house.
Pastor Bam, you yeah. got your mic in order. Well, I mean, they tell me, me to get my microphone in order. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, or, right. or, or people are going to order me a microphone. I don't know. Whatever it takes, you know what I'm saying? Just look me up. <laughs> we got to do an offering for Van's new microphone. Everybody yeah. sing Get your mic. Hey. Get, get your mic in order. Yeah, I received that. I received that. I received get that. Your mic in order. Woo! Hey, listen, thank you all um, for working with us. Thank you all for staying with us. And uh, man, we, we're going to keep this show moving, man. We're going to keep this show moving. And uh, I hope you guys can hear me a little bit better now. Um, I'm not quite sure. Oh, okay. All right. Hey, listen, I saw where uh, somebody said, you do the, the talking. I do the the sign language or song interpretation. I don't know. Just, oh, just no. craziness, man. All of these are my family members. So I thank you all for hooking me up. Hey, listen, uh, Pastor Darnisha Thomas has on an amazing t shirt. What's that t shirt? Oh, yeah. Say Let me stand up real quick. You know, it's like a way to strength for the struggle. And uh, if you want to get that t shirt, uh, I think they threw, they threw it on the screen earlier. There it is again. You can receive that T-shirt. Just go right there and uh, and uh, govern yourselves accordingly. Uh, order as many as you want. Uh, order some for your church family so that they'll know you are Saline and you want them to Saline as well. Uh, but strength for the struggle, Saline. That's that's a good shirt to put on to um, to wear um, uh, throughout the rest of this. Uh, year and through the next year, so you can be reminded. But listen, uh, let me ask you, Darnisha, what do you do to say live? What do you do to say live? Oh, that's a good question. Um, honestly, you know, Friday nights, whenever I'm not doing youth group or kids, chasing after kids virtually now, I would just Friday night, um, get that kettle going, get that good tea, that good herbal tea. And then I got my Sabbath lights on, my sailor lights, and yeah. I just start listening to my to my jams. I'm, I'm listening to my Friday night. Got some Anthony Evans on there, my Maverick City music, my yeah. We Will Worship from South Africa. Like I got a lot, I got a lot of music, but that's just my way for me to get into that sailor mindset at the time of Sabbath. But sometimes I do it whenever I need that emergency sailor, though. Absolutely. Uh, one of the things that I love to do is, I mean, because I don't have any money, I love looking at cars, you know, just window shopping, you know, driving by, just take some time off and just stop at some car lots and look at nice cars. I, I like high end cars. And so since I know I'll never be able to buy one, I just like looking at them. And I love engaging the, the salesman, you know what I'm saying, as if I am going to buy one so I can get in it. Turn it, turn it on, turn the radio on, you know, and even if I can sneak, sneak a, a test drive, I mean, I just have so much fun and freedom um, and resting. Like I'm not thinking about anything else when I'm actually looking at those cars. So those are some of the things that I do. Um, but listen, we want to engage the group that's watching us tonight. And uh, we have this Sela box. Uh, we have this Sela box that we want to give away um, on tomorrow. We're going to give away three boxes tomorrow. And some of you have been posting in the comments uh, last night. Uh, somebody said that they 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 like to uh, think about traveling from here to the moon. Uh, that gives them rest. <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, that's them. But uh, uh, we have the Sela box uh, that they they put up earlier, and we want you to know that we're going to give away uh, those boxes for the best ideas. Uh, the best Ooh. ideas. Talk, talk to us, uh, Darnisha, about this box. How they can get this box? Um, how you can get this box is you tell us. Yeah. What is your best way to Sela? How do you sell Sela? Do you even Sela? Is the question. Mm. So just tell us how. What's the best? Or even if you're not there yet, just tell us what is your ideal Sela? What does that look like? All right, all right. So tell us what your idea of Sela is like. Um, we're going to take those comments tonight and we're going to comb through and uh, try to grab the best one from tonight. And tomorrow, we'll we'll announce the name of those who gave us some of the best ideas to Sela. We'll try to post them again so that you can take advantage of these opportunities that we have been given 
to actually rest. Man, did not uh, Gina Stewart preach the word of the Lord today? I got so excited. I mean, I, I started slapping the desk, man. And I, I'm kind of like Gamal. I'm like, man, bring the B3 back. You know, bring it back. <laughs> Man, what a word, what a word, what a word. I, I don't know about you, but that morning mm -hmm. about the Taylor Steelers from Pastor Roger Hernandez oh, was yes. everything. <laughs> Where was that message yeah. nine months ago? Oh my gosh. Uh, oh Roger my is goodness. Roger is a beast, man. He 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 shared that word, man, with, with authority and conviction. And tonight. We're not going to be let down. We're going to hear another amazing word um, from our speaker tonight. Hey, listen, we're going to go to this quick video on rest. I want you to take it all in, take it all in. And then right after that, we're going to get ready for the word of God for tonight. For the next few moments, quiet your mind and listen carefully with your whole heart. Take a deep breath in. Hold it. Now breathe out. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 11, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Deep breath in. Hold it. Now breathe it out. Jesus didn't say you might find rest or that somehow you'll find rest as you wander aimlessly through this life. He said, come to me and I will give you rest. I will give you rest. It's a promise. He goes on to tell us that he is gentle and that in him our very souls will find rest. Breathe in. Hold. Breathe out. You can take Jesus at his word. You can choose to take all your cares and worries, anxiety and pain, habits and hurts, and give them to Jesus. Are you restless? Are you weary and worn out? If given the opportunity, could today be that day of rest? As you breathe in, and breathe out. Remember that Jesus is patiently waiting for you to come to him, bringing everything that's weighing you down. Jesus is waiting to give you rest. Wow, wow, wow. Just some amazing uh, videos there and well, I just saw where someone said a great Sela idea is a red box and popcorn. <laughs> I know that's right. I know that's right. I ain't mad at it, man. I just don't want to go out the house. So I'll just do Netflix and popcorn. You know what I'm saying? I received that. I received that. Hey, Darnisha, talk to me tonight. There's somebody that is special here with us tonight. They just popped up on our screen. Introduce the man of God for us tonight. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know why y'all got me introducing because we already know who Dr. Wesley Knight is. I mean, you can't miss his glasses. I think that's why I had to come correct with my glasses game one time. And but all I can say is Dr. C. Wesley Knight mm -hmm. is an amazing, powerful, <laughs> dynamic preacher, mm, teacher, um, mm -hmm. author, and pastor of the Revision Church. Atlanta. Mm -hmm. I am so excited to have you with us for such a short time. And honestly, you know, just being on here with you, I'm not worthy, man. Like, how many glasses do you have that people want to know? I got it. I, I need to know. I need to know this. <laughs> listen, listen, you, you have been polluted probably by Van, Van Dion. Um, <laughs> Pastor no, Griffin probably picked you up to that. It's good to be no, with y'all tonight, though. What's up, Wes? You doing all right, man? I'm good. I'm good. It's good to be with you and Darnisha. It's a, I've seen you guys doing your thing. It's a blessing uh, to be here and to introduce my boy tonight. 
true, man. Yeah. If you would just take a moment and go ahead and introduce our speaker for tonight. Sure, sure. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be blessed tonight. It's my honor and privilege to introduce to you uh, Dr. Abdel George. He is the lead pastor of the Norwalk Seventh-day Adventist Church and the Breath of Life Seventh-day Adventist Church in Connecticut. He comes to us from the Northeastern Regional Conference, and he's one who is equipped for this moment uh, educationally or academically. He is indeed a scholar having a degree from Oakwood University, a master's from our seminary, and then he holds a doctorate from the New York Theological Seminary, as well as a master's in counseling. So he's well equipped academically, scholar, scholarship wise. But even more than that, he's an anointed preacher um, and he has an anointed wife, Chanel. Shout out to Chanel and their beautiful daughter, Amelia, who is just intelligent off the scale. This family means a lot to me. I met. Pastor Abdel George, when he was a student at Oakwood University. And um, we connected since then. He actually interned. He would drive up from Oakwood to be with me at Decatur Church here in Atlanta when I was pastoring there. And uh, just had the opportunity also to uh, do his ordination. And down through the years, we have just been friends. He's a younger brother and a friend in ministry. I can tell you this tonight. I can tell you this tonight. Um, he is a powerful, fiery preacher. It's funny because when we stand together, he's, uh, you know, quite a bit shorter than me, but don't judge the book by its cover. You are about to hear um, a, an anointed, powerful message through this man of God. And uh, I'm just waiting for what God's going to do. Amen. Family, you heard it after this song of selection by Dynamic Praise. The next voice you will hear. Dr. Abdel George, hear ye him. Hallelujah.
I want to praise the Lord for his goodness and his love and his mercy. I want to thank uh, the Pelt Committee for the kind invitation to this historical platform. I want to praise God for Dr. Jesse Wilson uh, and the Pelt Committee on this day. I want to get to the Word of God today. I want to invite you, if you have your Bibles with you, to turn with me to the book of 1 Kings, the 19th chapter. 1 Kings, the 19th chapter. And I'm going to read from the New Revised Standard Version of Scripture. And the Bible reads like this. Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, So may the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life like the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. Then he was afraid. He got up and fled for his life, and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah. He left his servant there, but he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he laid down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones, a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him, and said, Get up, eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank. Then he went into the strength of that food forty days and forty nights to Horeb, the mount of God. At that place he came to a cave and spent the night there. And the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He asked, I've been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. And I am alone, and they are seeking my life. Take, away, take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. For the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after a fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard of it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood on the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He asked, I've been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I am alone and left, and they are seeking my life. Take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Haziel as king over Aram. Also shall anoint Jehu, son of Nifshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, of Abel Meholah, as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes from the sword of Haziel, Jehu shall kill. Whoever escapes from the sword of Jehu, Elisha shall kill. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that I have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. So he set out from there and found Elisha, son of Shaphat, who was plowing. There were 12 yoke of oxen ahead of him. He was with the 12. Elijah passed by him, threw his mantle over him. He left the oxen, ran after Elijah, and said, Let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. Then Elijah said to him, Go back, for what have I done to you? He returned from following him, took the yoke of oxen, and slaughtered them, 
using the equipment from the oxen, he boiled their flesh and gave it to the people, and they ate it. Then he set out and followed Elijah and became his servant. For the time that's allotted before us, I want to talk under the subject entitled, I Quit. I Quit. I want you bow your heads as we pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for this powerful Pelk event. We're grateful, God, that your spirit has already been here. We pray in the name of Jesus that your word will go out without void. And at the end of our time together, may we be careful to give only one audience to praise, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We thank you for hearing. In Jesus' name we pray that everyone say amen. I quit. Elijah embarrassed the prophets of Baal. Jezebel threatened his life. Jezebel is good for her word because she has killed God's prophet before. She's committed to Baal as Elijah is to God. He did what was right, and now he has to run for his life. Jezebel is good. She knows she, knows she can do what she wants because she is following her, her commands of the enemy. Elijah, ladies and gentlemen, is afraid because uh, Ahab has, uh, has told uh, Jezebel everything that has happened with the prophets of Baal. Understand, ladies and gentlemen, God has used Elijah powerfully before. The word of the Lord came to him saying, go from here, turn eastward, and hide yourself by the wadi Cherith, which is east of Jordan, you shall drink from the wadi, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. He also says, go now to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and, I, and live there, for I have commanded a widow there to feed you. The Lord listened to the voice of Elijah, and the life of the child came into him again. He and the child revive. However, no matter how much God used Elijah powerfully, Elijah is afraid. Every now and again, the walk of righteousness gets overwhelming. So overwhelming that the prophet wanted to die. Elijah initially did not want to die, hence his reason for fleeing from Jezebel. But now the Bible tells us that Elijah has had enough. The prophet has had enough. No more fight within him. He has enough. Now the Bible tells us he's ready to give up, ready to throw in the towel. On numerous occasions, God manifests himself powerfully to Elijah. And one might ask the question, why is the prophet afraid? Does it matter how powerfully God has used you in the past? Sometimes human nature takes over. Does it matter how many sermons you have preached, revivals you have done, individuals you baptized, weddings you performed, babies you have blessed? The gravity of the current situation makes you lead into human nature. Can I just talk to somebody here today? When you see the gravity of the situation, sometimes it leads you to lead lean into your human nature rather than God. Jezebel may, ladies and gentlemen, God's Jezebel may be the individual that Elijah is afraid of, but can I just talk to somebody here today? He need not be afraid of Jezebel because the same God that delivered him is the same God that can deliver him from Jezebel. Can I just talk to somebody here today? Can I just bring you into the mind of Elijah for a minute? If uh, evil is raised in the land. An unspiritual leader, ladies and gentlemen, and his wife is in the land. He has moved several times for the cause. He's moved from district to district, from church to church, from conference to conference. Wife had no pension because she had to change jobs. Children could not make many friends because they had to change schools. Can I just talk to somebody here today? Elijah is sold out for the cause, but the text tells us 
because Elijah has gotten to the place where Elijah feels like giving up. And can I just talk to about two pastors in this place today that can just recognize sometimes you may be sold out for the cause, but can I just talk to you every now and again, you feel like throwing in the towel. Can I, every now and again, you feel like giving up. Every now and again, you feel like saying, I'm done with this. Can I just talk to somebody here today? Elijah is a prophet, but it does not exempt him from the pressure of wanting to do right, but yet still the enemy is trying to take him out. Here it is. How can you keep going when the journey seems to be too much? The first thing that the text teaches us today is when the journey seems to be too much. The first thing that we need to understand is we need to understand that God keeps us because of the magnitude of his personal interest. Here it is. The Bible tells us that Elijah has fled from Jezebel. He leaves his servant behind. He goes into the wilderness. Elijah, ladies and gentlemen, is going into the wilderness and he's not going there by, with any company. Elijah wants to be alone. Elijah does not want anyone in his space. Elijah is depressed. The prophet is depressed. The same prophet that God was with is depressed. The same prophet that God has used powerfully is depressed. The same prophet that God has allowed his spirit to use is depressed. And can I just talk to you today and let some pastor out there know that sometimes it's okay to be the press. I know you might not understand what the preacher is saying. Listen, man, sometimes it's okay to not want to feel all right. Sometimes it's okay to feel like quitting. But the good news is, ladies and gentlemen, even though you may feel like quitting, there's somebody named Jesus that does not leave you where you are. Somebody named Jesus picks you up every single time. What are you talking about, preacher? The Bible tells us, Elijah is afraid and he goes into the wilderness. The text tells us he has had enough to the point where he now asks for God to take his life. What are you talking about, preacher? The Bible tells us that Elijah has now asked for God to take his life. He goes and he sees a juniper tree and he lays under the juniper tree and he says, it's enough, God. Uh, I, I'm done with this. Take my life. I'm no better than my ancestors. Bible tells us Elijah wants God to take his life. But my question for Elijah is, didn't you run because you wanted to preserve your life? So how is it now that you want God to take your life? You ran from Jezebel because you wanted to preserve your life. But how come you now want to lose your life? Here it is. Can I tell you what, what's happening with Elijah? Can I just break this down? Can I counsel Elijah for a moment? Elijah doesn't necessarily want to lose his life. Elijah just wants to escape the pain. Okay. God have mercy. Elijah does not want to lose his life. Elijah wants to escape the pain. And can I talk to some pastor out there? You don't want to lose your life. You don't want to give up. You just want to escape the pain. You want to escape that district. You want to escape those members. You want to escape the politics. You want to escape the conference. You want to escape the loneliness and the isolation in ministry, you don't necessarily want to lose your life. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the text tells us Elijah goes under the Jew number tree. And Elijah is now requesting from God, I take my life. I'm no better than my ancestors. And the Bible tells us Elijah falls asleep. <laughs> God have mercy. And when Elijah falls asleep, text tells us angels show up at Elijah's head and gives him bread on a stone. Elijah, ladies and gentlemen, has asked God to take his life. Elijah, he, he literally wants God to kill.
kill him. But now the text tells us that God, while Elijah is sleeping, does not allow him to remain sleeping permanently, but God gives him a bread and stone for Elijah to eat. Oh, God of mercy. I'm so glad that God doesn't give me what I ask for. Is there anybody in here today that can bless God with this preacher and say, listen, man, I'm glad that God does not give me what I ask for. Some of us, if God was to give us what we ask for, we'll be in trouble. God woke him up through the angel, did not give him what he asked for, but gave him bread and gave him revival. I wish I had a church in this place today. Uh, is there anybody in here that can just declare I'm not, I'm, I'm so happy that God did not give me what I asked for. I wanted to be out of ministry, but God did not give me what I asked for. God knew you weren't spiritual enough. God knew that you, you could not survive not being a pastor. God knew that you and you're not spiritual spiritual enough you need some prayer you need somebody to pray for you need somebody to visit in a hospital you need somebody to be anointed when they're sick you need God to use you so that you can have some some measure of spirituality is there anybody who know what I'm talking about thank God he did not give me what I asked for thank God he did not give me what I asked for Thank God he did not allow me to quit. Thank God he did not allow me to turn in my resignation. Thank God he did not allow me to turn in my, my credentials. Thank God he did not allow me to quit. Text tells us, watch this. Text tells us God wakes him up. Oh, my God. Uh -huh. Through the angel. And the angel says, Elijah, get up and eat. Oh, God of mercy. Get up and eat. Uh, lest the journey uh, be too much for you. Oh, God. Um, get up and eat. Lest the journey uh, be too much for you. Uh, God uh, gave Elijah uh, uh, more than enough for him to be sustained. Uh, I'm thankful today that God has given me more than enough for me to be sustained. There are moments when I feel like I need to quit. <laughs> Can I be honest? I know you're out there. I know, I know uh, you're ministering in your district. I know you're ministering uh, in your church. I know, uh, young, young pastor, I know that you're, you're just starting out in ministry, and it seems difficult. It seems like the pressure is on you. It seems as if this is too much. This is not what you signed up for. I know um, that, that sometimes it feels overwhelming, but the good news is God gives us more than enough for us to be sustained. I, I'm, I'm, I'm delighted that God called me into the ministry and given me an opportunity, given me a call to change my life. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. Uh, is there anybody out there that can testify that there are moments when you just want to say, I'm done. Uh, you got the pressure of the conference uh, every single year. They're asking you about souls and goals. Uh, you got the pressure of the members. They want you to be a uh, holy all the time. They, they want you to act a certain way and live up to a higher standard. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. There's the pressure of the ministries. Uh, you got the pressure if you have a family. You got the pressure of spending time with them uh, and, the, and, and giving enough time to your spouse, giving enough time to your children. Is there anybody who knows what I'm talking about? That there are moments when you feel like giving up. But God says, listen man, I can't leave you in that situation. I can't leave you in that in that feeling. I gotta lift you up. I gotta pick you up. And somebody here today ought to bless God with this preacher and say, I thank God he does not leave me in that situation. He picks me up and he lifts me up and he revives me every, every single time. What are you talking about, preacher? Here it is. Text tells us uh, not only uh, can, I, can I continue the journey because of the magnitude of God's personal interest, but I can continue the journey because of the magnitude of his word. Oh, God. The word of the Lord uh, came to Elijah. The Bible tells us Elijah makes his way 40 days and 40 nights. He makes his way up to the Mount of Horeb. The Bible tells us that the word of the Lord came to Elijah. 
The Bible tells us that God asks Elijah, why are you here? What are you doing here, Elijah? Uh, what are you doing here? Uh, the Bible tells us uh, that Elijah comes and he says, listen, I've been zealous for the Lord. I've, I've followed the Lord. I've, I've done what he asked me to do. I've, I've, I've answered his call. I've, I've done the ministry he's asked me to do. And the Bible tells us, here it is, ladies and gentlemen, that the word of the Lord uh, came to Elijah. Uh, God of mercy. Don't miss this. If you miss anything I say, the text tells us the word of the Lord came to Elijah. Word of the Lord came to Elijah. Text tells us that he tells Elijah, uh, come here. Come, the Bible tells us he comes into the mountain, into the cave, and he tells Elijah, ladies and gentlemen, stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind so strong, and it was splitting the mountains, breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord is not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound sheer of silence. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, here it is. And here's what I need to tell somebody here today. Oh, God, many of us are looking for the Lord, the Lord in extravagant manners. Oh, God. Hey, God. Many of us are looking for the Lord in an extravagant way. Help me, Holy Ghost. But God is trying to get you out of that state of mind where you always need to see him in extravagant ways. Oh, God, you don't believe me. Here it is. Elijah, go to the widow. Uh, I prepared uh, for her. I prepared for you food from her. He goes there. He goes there. He gets the preparation. And then all of a sudden, her son is sick and her son dies. And Elijah prays. And here it is. The Bible tells us that, that, that the young man is revived through Elijah. Help me, Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us that uh, there is no rain uh, in the land. And Elijah Praise for rain. Oh, God. And rain falls. The Bible tells us that he's on the, the mount and, 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 and the prophets of Baal. And he's embarrassing the prophets of Baal. And fire falls from heaven. Extravagant manners. Oh, God. Can I talk to somebody in here today? And many of us are looking for the Lord because he's used us before in extravagant ways. We've seen extravagant things through him. But and we all, we're so consumed with extravagant things that we've become addicted to extravagant things. I wish I had a church in here. Can I just bring it home? Many of us are, have been preaching in large churches with thousands of members. And many of us have mid-sized churches, 500 and 300 members. But now the Lord has brought you to an empty church. Now the Lord has brought you to a membership on Zoom. Now the Lord has brought you to the place where you, know you can't see extravagant things anymore. You have to be able to see him in his still small way. I wish I had somebody in here today. Anybody in here knows what I'm talking about. God is trying to get you out of the extravagant mindset and bring you to the place that no matter where you are, no matter where I am, I know that you're there with me and I know that you're going to work in miraculous ways. I know that I'll see you in the earthquake. I may not see you in the earthquake. I may not see you in the wind. I may not see you in the fire. But if I just calm down for a moment, I'll hear your still small voice. Is there any pastor out there that can say, listen, man, I'm no longer addicted to the extravagant. I know that the Lord is not only in the extravagant, but he's in the mind new things as well. Somebody ought to bless God wherever you are. Here it is. Text tells us. Bible tells Elijah, oh, come. Uh, the Bible tells us, watch this now. Elijah comes in to the mountain. And God says, what are you doing here? Why are you here? Oh, God. If Elijah had just remembered how God delivered him, he would not have been in the mountain. He would not have been in the wilderness. He would not have ran from Jezebel. And here it is, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible tells us God not only 
cannot continue the journey because of the magnitude of God's personal interest. Not only can I continue the journey because of the magnitude of his word, but I can also continue the journey because of the magnitude of the work of God. The Bible tells us Elijah is in the mountain, and God, God says, Elijah, why are you here? Uh, what are you doing here? Uh, Elijah, Elijah says, listen, I've been zealous for you. Uh, I've been zealous for the God of hosts. The Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, killed your prophets with the sword, and I am I'm alone and left. And they are seeking my life to take it away. And here it is. Then the Lord said to him, go return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. God have mercy. When you arrive, you shall anoint Haziel as king over Aram. Uh, here it is. Don't miss this. Text tells us Elijah started his journey in the wilderness. <laughs> God. Elijah uh, started his journey in the wilderness. He came because he's afraid of Jezebel. He asked the Lord to take his life. And text tells us Elijah uh, started out the journey in the wilderness. But he comes to the cave. Oh, God have mercy. Uh, he asks uh, God, uh, the Lord to take his life. The Lord revived him, gave him food for the journey through an angel twice. The Bible tells us he comes to the cave. And God says, what are you doing here, Elijah? Oh, God. Uh, what are you doing here, Elijah? Um, um, and then the Lord speaks. And when the Lord speaks, don't miss this. Text says, the Lord tells Elijah, go return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. The very place that Elijah uh, journeys from. Oh, God, because he's dejected and depressed. Here it is. God sends him back where he came from. Oh, God, I wish I had two people in this place today. Uh, the very place that God, that Elijah left is the same place God told him to go back. And I've come by here to talk to some pastor. Is there any pastor out there? Is there any minister out there? Is there somebody out there under the sound of my voice that can say, listen, man, I came here because I was depressed. I didn't intend to go back where I came from. Is there somebody who knows that God is so interested that in you that he cannot let you quit? He sends you back where you started because ladies and gentlemen is there somebody who knows what I'm talking about you are not always a preacher you are a messed up individual you are messed up in your mind some of you know what I'm talking about you are in the club you are all, you are doing all kinds of stuff but God says no 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 I can't I can't have her continue doing that I can't have him continue going that direction and God pulled you out of the darkness and brought you into his marvelous light not only did he do that he put a calling on your life put somebody in a praise God right there he put a purpose on your life and when he put the purpose on your life he started you on your way and guess what in the midst of the purpose there might be turbulence in the midst of the purpose there might be a rocky road in the midst of the purpose there might be some issues but God says listen man you gotta stay where I put you you gotta go back where I sent you you ain't supposed to be here Elijah you should not be in the cave Elijah I used you in a powerful way Hey, I need you to continue you being used by me. Is there somebody in this place today that can just bless the Lord and say, listen, man, I'm so glad God didn't allow me to have what I asked him for, but he sends me back where he started me. Somebody with a bless God wherever you are. Here it is. The text tells us, watch this now. The text tells us Elijah, oh God, uh, is being uh, sent back where he came from. Um, um, here it is. Um, Elijah says, um, I've been zealous for you, Lord. Um, um, <laughs> I like how he says it. He says, I I I've been zealous for you. I I've been um, um, doing the work you've told me to do. 
uh, and the Israelites has forsaken you, forsaken your covenant, they've thrown down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword, and I am alone. Oh God, hear, hear Elijah? I alone am left. Uh, they've been seeking your life. Uh, they've been seeking my life to take it away. I'm the only one uh, that's left. But here's how God works. Uh, pastor, here's how God works. Uh, clergyman, hear how God works. Clergywoman, here it is. The text tells us, oh God, every single complaint that Elijah had. Uh, um, God of mercy. Every single complaint that he came to the cave with, God allowed him, uh, Lord have mercy, to be, uh, 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 to leave with every single complaint being resolved. <laughs> what do you mean, Pastor? What are you talking about? Um, he came complaining about uh, um, the king and his wife. God says, Elijah, uh, man, I have a new king for you to anoint. Um, he came complaining that he was the only one left. God said, listen, man, Elijah, I've left 7,000 that have not bowed to Baal. <laughs> he came complaining. Oh, God, ladies and gentlemen, he's the only one left. God said, listen, um, in fact, you're not the only one left. I've already uh, uh, begun, begun to, to groom your replacement. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Uh, there's somebody that's thinking too much about themselves. There's somebody who's thinking too highly about themselves. There's somebody who's thinking that you are the only one. But God says, listen, no, I've already set up your replacement. There's a pastor who's thinking that, that they're all by themselves. But God says, no, no, no. There's somebody I need you to mention. Tour. I've come by here to talk to somebody in this place. Is there anybody who knows what I'm talking about? God says, listen, I can't let you quit because the ma of the magnitude of the work. There's too much work to be done. I still need you to pray for somebody. I still need you to baptize somebody. I still have sons and daughters that have not conformed to the world. I have other preachers I need you to mentor. I have people that I need you to, to, that need to hear the word. I have people that I need you to preach to. I have broken people that I need you to counsel. I have babies I need you to dedicate. Is there anybody with this preacher here today who says, I've come to the cave with all of my issues. I've come to the cave with all of my stress. I've come to the cave because of the members that's been getting on my nerves. I've come to the cave because of the pressure of the conference. I've come to the cave because of the, pr the pressure to upheld. To, to upstand and to uphold I've come to the cave ladies and gentlemen because of all the mess that I'm going, I'm going through but the good news is God says listen man there's still more work to be done there's still more things for you to do there's still more places for you to go there's still more places for you to preach there's still more ministry to be done is there anybody in this place today that can just wave their hands with this preacher wherever you are and say thank you God you did not allow me to come to the cave and quit at the cave. No, no, no. But you gave my life an even better purpose. You gave me more work to be done. Is there somebody here today that can just bless God and say, thank God he did not allow me to quit. I was on my way out, but he did not allow me to quit. I was about to give up, but he did not allow me to quit. I was getting ready to throw in the towel, but he did not allow me to quit is there anybody in here is there any pastor out there is there any pastor who can declare with this preacher I came to the cave but God told me there's more work to be done uh, unless I keep you too long unless I keep you too long Bible tells us Bible tells us how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed how shall they believe in whom they have not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? You can't quit because God, God, God has so much work for you to do. Uh, 
I was watching my, one of my friends the other day, one of my close friends. Uh, we talk all the time. Um, we, when a pastor friend of mine, uh, we, we talk almost weekly, pray together. And I remember uh, he sent me a clip um, from, from T.D. Jakes, and well, some of you should, should look at it um, at some time when you have some time. Uh, in the clip, T.D. Jakes was talking about he felt like quitting. He felt like giving up. Uh, he, he didn't sign up for the fame, he said. He didn't sign up to be recognized. He just wanted to be effective. And uh, T.D. Jakes was saying uh, that he was on his way out. He's getting ready to throw in the towel to quit the ministry. And he said that there was a little old lady who, who, who came to him. She, and she, she said that uh, she, was, uh, she was listening to him preaching. Um, and she felt like dying uh, if, if she did not listen to his sermons day after day. She probably would have died. She said um, to T.D. Jakes, I was listening uh, to you every day, and that's the only thing that kept me. Uh, and uh, she said to T.D. Jakes, she said, um, it's not for them. Uh, it's for us. Uh, she said, it's not for them. It's for us. And that moved me so much because i got to be transparent with you. There, there are moments when I feel like, quitting. Moments when uh, I feel like this is too much for me. Uh, moments when it feels like no one respects the ministry anymore. It feels like no one respects the pastor anymore. The pastor has lost his, his respect amongst the church members. It feels like there's so much pressure from the outside world to live up to a certain standard that we, if we are to be honest with, we cannot live up to. Uh, and so there are moments when I feel like quitting. But then that day when my friend sent me that videotape, it just reminded me of why God called me into the ministry. Uh, it's not about the, the popularity. It's not about the accolades. It's not about the places you preach or, or, or the invitations you receive. It's not about uh, the, the members, um, so much so. But God called us because there's somebody uh, that, that need to hear about Jesus and the only person they will, we will, they will respond to is you. Uh, think about that for a moment. Each one of us have a specific purpose. Uh, somebody will not respond to an Abdel George. They, will not respond uh, to a, a Wesley Knight or, 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 or T.D. Jakes or, or Jesse Wilson. They will not respond. But to you, God has called you specifically because somebody uh, will respond because of you. Uh, so I've come by here to tell you, Pastor, I've come by here to tell you, uh, you can't quit because there's still more work for you to do. Won't you bow your heads as we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of ministry. We thank you for calling us. Uh, even when we did not want the calling, you said before I formed in the womb, I knew you. Before you were formed, I knew you. You told Jeremiah that you had a calling on his life. God, today... Pray for each minister out there uh, that feel like quitting, feel like giving up, feel like throwing in the towel, feel like surrendering, feel like saying, I'm done with this. I pray, God, that you would revive them like you did Elijah. I pray, Lord, that when they come to the cave, that you would remind them that everything that you've come to the cave with, I've already solved. <laughs> And there's more work for you to do. And so go back where you came from. Go back to the church. Go back to the ministry. Go back to the district. Go back where you came from. I ask God that you will can give us the strength to stay on the cause. You said the race is not for the swift, nor for the strong, but for those who endure to the end. So I pray today that 
each one of us will continue in the race. And when all is said and done, we pray that as we preach, we ourselves would not be a castaway, but then we'll hear the words, well done, a good and faithful servant. Thank you for hearing our prayers today. Thank you for answering. In the matchless, powerful name of Jesus, we pray. Let every minister say, Amen. Amen. God bless you today. Wow. What a word. An epic word. My. <laughs> you got to drink something behind that one, huh? Woo! Listen, and I'm in Minnesota, so I mean... Man, I mean, the, the thing that just carries me is he says, there's more work to be done. Mm. Hallelujah. <laughs> I, I mean, I need, I need that to resonate in somebody's quitting spirit tonight. There is more work to be done. It's not over. It's not over. There's more work to be done. And my heart has been made glad. Uh, I, I love how he says, man, Elijah didn't want to lose his life. He just wanted yes. to escape the pain. And wow. The pain. Escape the pain. And how many of us have ever gone through this struggle of just, it gets so overwhelming. And I don't know about you, but I mean, let me just be vulnerable real quick. Like this past year, not only was what uh, was I dealing with the pandemic and dealing with burnt out, but then George Floyd happened, yeah, and yeah. that was I was like, Lord, just let it stop. Like I couldn't even. It, it was it was rough, but you know, like I it is so affirming to hear this message again, and it just shows that it's okay to be depressed. It's okay to have these feelings, and we need. And I think what I love about my generation of pastors and preachers is that we are tired of faking this funk. Mm. And I think we're tired. We're sick and tired of thinking that everything is okay, that God is on our side. But at the same time, we have to embrace our humanity. Yeah, yeah. Like Elijah. yeah. And it's okay for you to go through those challenges. Um, it's okay for you to go through those suicidal thoughts. But make sure that you see a therapist, yeah. you see someone yeah. there that you, you know, I, I can go on and on, but then yeah. I, I'm going to let you, I'm going to let you put it, in. It, 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 it's like, uh, we, you know, we got to stop looking for God in extravagant places. You know what I'm saying? You actually may find him at your therapist. That's where you probably need to find him. He's not in the wind. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. he, he may be right earthquake. where, yeah, not in the earthquake. You know what I'm saying? Stop looking for him. <laughs> And then I think the other thing that just really just just hit me, man, was we think too high of ourselves, you know, but God has already put in place your successor. Uh, our responsibility is not to be thinking high of ourselves, but just be thankful that he wants to use us. Get up, go do what you've been called to do, and then learn how to understand God is in control of everything, not us. He's in control. Ah, man, good word tonight. If you receive that word tonight, y'all know how we did it last night. Just drop in the chat right now. I receive it. I receive it. Come on, let me let me hear those. I receive it. We want to see some flames on, on, that, on, on, that, on that chat thread, man. We want to see some yeah. flames. We want to see some hands lifted. Yeah, put some hands lifted. Put some flames on that thing. Let me hear you say, I receive it. Uh, 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 Darnisha, what is our call to commitment tonight? What, what, is, what does that look like tonight? I think our call to commitment in this in this um, season that we're going through right now is like I love how when Abdel mentioned about the idea that God led him back into the wilderness when he got that call. And I just want all of us here to go back to a time where we said yes to, to Jesus or we mm. said, yes, here I am, God, send me. I don't know about you, but like Pelk really saved my life Wow! two years ago. And I didn't even know how much I needed Pelk. The following month, 
I was questioned why I was called to be a pastor. Mm. And I was, I was talked down upon. All the stuff that I've done as a pastor was not good enough. And I felt like, Lord, you know what? I think I'm just going to have to go somewhere else. But you know what? It got to the point that one morning, like I just thought about everything that I thought about from Pelk before, the month before. And that literally saved my life. That it kept like reminding me, listen, I'm here for this. I think we just need to take that time. And if you're going through the struggle right now, tomorrow morning, when you wake up, when you have your first devotional talk with God, I want to invite you to just sit back and think about that time that you said yes. I want you to think about that time, just write down, like just if you have a journal, like write down all the stuff that God has done through you in your ministry, even before you uh, you got that assignment as a pastor. I just want you to write that thing down. And at this moment, um, also, I want to challenge you and I want to give a shout out to my big brother who's here with me in the Twin Cities, Pastor Victor Wilson of yeah. Lake Wilson. Listen, he saw me at my lowest this summer. And all he reminded me was to have this marathon mindset of ministry. And that's yeah. something that I had to work as a young pastor. Like I'm I'm pushing four years as a as a full-time pastor in, in ministry. And that's something for me to be reminded is to have that that marathon mindset come up with like take a nap yeah. in Jesus' name. In Jesus' take name. Take a nap um, in Jesus' name. Get that cool book, book like just take your time and don't beat yourself up if you're not able to go to certain places or be with people at a certain time. Learn that um learn the practice of surrender. Mm. Learn the practice of surrender. Don't think that you can do this on your own. Just how Elijah Elijah had to look out, had to get a servant and had to get someone to go behind him. Just remind yourself that you have the power to delegate. And I'm saying this to myself. Yeah. Right. I'm yeah. saying this to myself. So I just want to encourage you guys um just to make those commitments and to be able to just have that marathon mindset rewind go back to the time that god has called you and also be honest with your feelings call those call those feelings by name yeah so that i i just want us all to commit ourselves for that i got excited because you said go back to the first time you said yes just take time out and do that and man that thing hit me rest in your yes <laughs> rest in your yes maybe we, we didn't do a two part today rest in your yes your first yes moment to god when you said yes i will i will i will serve yes i will be what you've called me to be rest in your yes go back to that time when you said yes and rest in that moment rest in your yes hey let me pray tonight for those who are here with us i see people are are commenting in the uh in the chat man hashtag take a nap uh man rest in your yes let's rest pray in your heavenly father for the word of the Lord that was preached tonight. All of us have been where Elijah was and we need to be reminded that you are the one that's in charge. This is your work, it is not our work. And we tonight are thankful that we can be reminded when we said yes to you, that is, you would be the all seeing God. You would be the one that's in control. You would be the one that would lead us and guide us and tell us what to do and how to do it and what to say when you are the one that's in control. And we say yes to that, yes to you to lead us and guide us. Help us to rest in that yes that we first had when we first came to you and gave our lives to follow you fully and completely. Bless Pastor Abdel George as he continues yeah. to share the good news around the world, literally. And then, Father, we pray for Pastor Calvin Watkins, who's going to bring the word tonight uh, at 7 p.m. Continue to fill us with your power and yeah. help us to rest and enjoy this moment that you've given yeah. to us. In yeah. Jesus' name, amen and amen. 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 Hey, listen, we want you all to be reminded um, that tonight we're not done at 7 p.m. We have Pastor Calvin Watkins, the president of the Southwest Region Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. He is going to bring the word tonight. And then at 9 p.m., Pastor Thomas, what's happening at 9 p.m.? At 9 p.m., 
it's we're gonna have a help at night with the women in ministry. So one time for the clergy sisterhood. I know around this time we all would have been sitting on the right side up front at mostly complex with our with our heels. So if not, you know, just make sure you just switch out your heels and put on your flats for our discussion about women in ministries. We're gonna talk about issues related to women in ministry. And this is not just only exclusive for the sister pastors and chaplains. This is also for those of our allies, those of our brother pastors who have a sister pastor that you hold dear to your heart. Someone who's either in your church or if you have a daughter or if you have girls in your church who might be eventually become pastors. I, we wanna invite you all to just join with us and just to hear just the perspectives that, that will be shared in this discussion. There's a lot of stuff that us women pastors we go through, um, like what kind of glasses to wear, what what hair to wear on mm -hmm. on a given Sabbath, and and it's and it's deeper than that. This is out not just only about ordination or about yeah. like even the sexual misconduct talks. There's a lot more stuff that all of your women pastors wish that you would know. Absolutely. So, catch and, uh, us at nine o'clock tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have to be there because I am, I am, I am a huge supporter, and uh, um, and I have pastoral colleagues and friends and sisters who are in the in the ministry, and uh, it gives me great joy to walk alongside these giants in ministry. Pastor Thomas is one of them. That's my girl, and uh, and then we had Pastor Asha Lennon last night from Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, hey. Pastor Shonda Nunez will be with us. Uh, yeah, all of these ladies are just amazing women. And uh, and I love doing ministry with them every chance I get. And as long as I'm sitting where I get a chance to sit and call the shots, where I get a chance to call the shots, uh, the women will be rightly represented. And uh, so we want to make sure you're there tonight at 9 p.m. Um, as we talk about women in ministry answers issues and answers. All right. Uh, and then tomorrow morning um, is our last worship experience tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. with uh, Dr. Myron P. Edmonds. Um, he's going to close out our Selah conference. And then we have a host of boot camps that will take place after that. Hey, listen, I'm excited about what God is doing and yes, it is yes, not over. It is not over yet. You know, uh, uh, Steve Ruff, if y'all know Steve Ruff, he, he he always say, what do you get when you take the L off a lover? Over, baby. Well, it ain't over yet, baby. It ain't over yet. We're going higher um, as we get ready for the worship experience tonight with um, with uh, with Pastor Calvin Watkins and then mm -hmm. 9 p.m. with our lady. So thank you all for being with us. For those who would like to get that Selah t-shirt, show it to 